The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Imagine, up until this point, sensible software were only well known to us Commodore 64 owners for the unusual yet awesomely addictive shoot 'em up, Whizball. And also the successful shoot 'em up construction kit. Little did we know that they'd later go on to make games like Megalomania, Cannon Fodder, and quite possibly the greatest football game in the world. All of these also covered on the channel under the Amiga Games playlist if you want to check them out. However, before that, let's feast our eyes on their first football creation, and after peddling a half-finished game around a variety of potential publishers, the sensible software defence of John Herr, Chris Yates and new boy Martin Galway finally signed up with the Premier League team publisher in its own right for the Commodore 64 Microprose. You guys in the USA might have heard of this game before, but under the strange title of Keith Van Eren's Pro Soccer. Aye, this chap who's been taken here with a bunch of kids. Bit suspect if you ask me. The footy package contained a normal 11 a side game, plus a version of American Rules Indoor 6 a side. Both varieties displayed using an overhead viewpoint. The options were amazing. We could have two player friendly matches, leagues for both indoor or outdoor games, the World Cup or All Star Tournament and the Microprose International Challenge so you could play solo against computer controlled teams. As I was a glutton for punishment, I choose to play as Ireland for the purpose of the video, being patriotic and all, but don't expect me to show off many fancy skills here as admittedly I am pretty rusty after all these years. In addition to the basic tackling, running and dribbling the balls, there's a whole range of possible footballing moves at your disposal. You can volley the ball forward, flip it backwards overhead, chip it and perform curling left and right shots. A far cry from the bounce a ball on your head trick from international soccer, that's for sure. In all fairness, apart from maybe Ocean Software's Match Day 2, there was very little else for us Commodore 64 owning footy fans. Maybe Emlyn Hughes's International Soccer, or Gary Lineker's Superstar Soccer. I was always a bit peeved off with all our footy games having the moniker of soccer. Nobody in the whole of England called it soccer, nor do they to this day. It's footy or football and that was that. Why do the Americans insist on calling it soccer? Why do they have such a problem calling it football? The control method couldn't be simpler or more effective. And out of the 11 players at your disposal, you control the one nearest to the ball, then dribbling becomes automatic as soon as you have possession. The fire button will kick the ball into the direction you're facing. A nice mechanic is that the longer you hold down the fire button, the more powerful your shot becomes. As briefly mentioned, there are other types of kick which are accessed by certain joystick actions, executed immediately before kicking the ball. For instance, centering the joystick before the kick results in a high lob, while a diagonal movement executes a spectacular banana kick. There's even a bicycle kick that sends the ball flying back over your head, which can be used to bewilder defenders. The usual other footballing features are there, and gaining possession from your opposition by slide tackling is as simple as pressing fire when you don't have the ball. Corners, throw-ins and goal kicks all feature too, but also so does the weather. I should definitely also mention the excellent replay feature, which was also added to the sensible soccer games and proved to be pretty effective. When you score a goal, the last few seconds of play leading up to the goal are replayed in slow motion and even crackly tape rewind effects are incorporated to make the whole thing look realistic. Well, as realistic as you'd expect for 1988. This was a very nice touch though at the time. Add all this together and it soon becomes pretty clear how something as simple as a football game could be so overwhelmingly awesome. It was undoubtedly the best football game ever produced at the time and is still one of the most user-friendly games to get into. Okay, okay, 
Maybe that's a bold statement, as I know there are loads out there that preferred Emlyn Hughes or international soccer, but that's always open for debate. The duration of the games can be changed to suit, the strength of the curl you put into the shots can be tickered with, and the colour of your football kits can be changed, all in the menus. The attention to detail really is flawless. Again, this would be further adapted for the Sensi Soccer games, but a system like this obviously left the blueprints for how footy games should be made. Players jumping for joy when a goal is scored, and the aforementioned action replays were the icing on the cake, along with the brilliant tunes and effects to accompany the action, provided by the legend Martin Galway. If this game didn't get a big thumbs up, I'd chop it off and feed it to my dog. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Speedball, but without the violence. Hmm, now there's a combination of a game, eh? Up until getting this game, I have been constantly scraping down the cartridge ends of my battered copy of International Soccer to get a game of football going on the C64, so it was definitely a breath of fresh air when Micropro Soccer was released. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and let me know, because I'm pretty interested, which was your ultimate favourite Commodore 64 football game. Thanks for watching guys, I appreciate the continued support, and if you're enjoying the nostalgia, then maybe consider subscribing to the channel and becoming part of this epic journey down memory lane. There's so many games left to revisit, hopefully you'll join me in the next video. Until then, bye for now.